This is my shark pond. It's gone through a few changes over the years as I've moved a few times since I set it up. For those of you who are just seeing my content for the first time, I've been caring for and researching sharks and stingrays since I was 16 years old. I'm now 35. In 2012, I started rescuing, rehabilitating, and rehoming sharks that are commonly kept in the home aquarium with my good friend Matt Hyde. Here are the current inhabitants of my pond. Fatty is a gray bamboo shark that I saw in an aquarium store and purchased him and his sister. Unfortunately, as pups, they both contracted Vibrio and his sister passed away from it. Fortunately though, I was able to save Fatty. He got his name from his body type, which only looks quote unquote fat when his species is healthy. He's actually not fat at all, he's a big muscle. He's about six or seven years old now. I don't know his exact age for sure because he was already hatched when I got him. He grew to full size not that long after. Yoshi is a coral cat that I purchased from an aquarium store after he had been there for months. He was too big and quickly outgrowing the small tank that they had him in, so I took him home. I'm not sure how old he is since he was an adult when I got him, but I've had him for about six years now. Amelia is an epaulette shark, also known as a walking shark. I'm not 100% sure as to where she came from or how old she is, but the store that I rescued her from had her for about five years. She was an adult when they got her, and she was laying eggs in their display tank at about the second year that they had her. I've had her for about two and a half years, so she might be about 11 years old. I got a text one afternoon around 3.30 p.m. It was from someone who used to work at the store that she was at, telling me that if I did not pick her up by 5 p.m. that day, that their manager would euthanize her. Something, they were not sure which of the species in the display tank that she was in, was eating the other expensive fish. Since she was one of the biggest sharks in their display at the time, they blamed her. I got over there shortly after and took her home. We ended up having to rescue six more sharks shortly after with a new threat, that if we didn't come to get them, that they would be left outside without aeration in garbage cans filled with just enough water for them by the trash. They were a bunch of jerks, those people. Luckily, someone bought their company and closed down their stores. There's a special place in hell for people who mistreat animals, a real special place. These people were extra special. In the end though, I'm grateful that they contacted me since the moment that I saw Amelia in their display tank, I wanted the opportunity to take her home and give her a better life. She now lives in my system and loves her three buddies that she lives with. El Guapo is a Mexican horn shark that I rescued from someone who bought the tank that he was living in and all of the other fish that were in there with him. I have an entire video that I made about his rescue and rehabilitation. I'll leave a link to that video in this video's description. He's about four years old now and I've had him for about three years. I rescued him as a pup. He is really sweet and has adapted well to his poor vision, which unfortunately resulted from the abuse that he endured in the tank that he was previously in before I rescued him. A future inhabitant is Zelda. She is currently growing out in a smaller aquarium. From there, she will be raised in the sump of the pond. Once she's large enough, she will be introduced to the rest of the crew. As an egg, Zelda was being auctioned off to anyone who won the auction. She is tank raised from a company called ORA, which provided the egg to this auction. I don't know much about why this was happening or why people who did not have the proper system to raise her in were able to even bid on the egg, but luckily a friend won it and gave it to me. ORA tagged the egg for 6-22 or June 22nd, which is likely the date that her mother laid her egg since she hatched on October 20th, just 11 days shy of the full 130 day average gestation period. Like I did with Fatty and El Guapo, I'm training her as a pup so that we bond and form a mutual respect for one another. This is essential since she will reach a length of about three feet as an adult. This will make it much easier for me to handle her if need be. So here's how my pond works. This is the main pond where the four adult sharks live. On one side, I have a large canister filter, which is the biological filtration. I recently added some additional aeration. There was no problem, I just wanted to add it. And the sump, which holds additional water volume, extra live rock, carbon, filter floss, and acts as an excellent nursery for smaller sharks. The canister filter pulls in water from here. It runs through the canister and then pumps it out through this altered PVC. The water then gets pumped up into the sump, goes through the sump, and drains back down into the main pond here. It then gets pulled back into the canister and then the whole process filters the water again. This system is not the prettiest, but it works really well, and these sharks are absolutely thriving in it. They don't really do much, so this is perfect for them. I will go into more detail about their low activity levels due to their low metabolic rates and more during Aquaparel Shark Week, 
which starts on June 1st and ends on June 9th of 2019. So be sure to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss it. You can also follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for some behind the scenes content that I will post periodically throughout the six months leading up to Aqua Apparel Shark Week. If you have any questions or need help rehoming a shark, feel free to either leave a comment below or drop me an email at contact at aquaparel.com.